to get uh, like a maybe like a, a chin lock now on him <laughs> at this point, but just uh, you just never know who you're going to run into, and it, it is very cool to see the fan interaction. And John and I worked with uh, Arn Anderson and Tully Blanchard today, and again, it's another you know it's another thing. It's the Horsemen, and we're in Charlotte, North Carolina. It's literally Horseman country. Yeah, absolutely. So these fans, I mean, they're bringing out stuff that's 35, 40 years old. They're talking yeah. about posters and programs and pictures and sure. cards and you know action figures. Yeah. It's it's so cool, and you know, it it makes you. I hate to use like a cliche, like old school is cool, <laughs> but this is an old school crowd. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you cross genres in, in this place because yes. you kind of touch both the modern era and that golden era. Yeah. Well, you know, when you look at fans, I, you know, I've always said I've, I've never been a rock and roll star, so I'm sure they'd say the same thing about their fans. But wrestling fans, uh, when you see somebody come that has uh, uh, some piece of memorabilia, 35, 40 years old. And they, they want it signed. I mean, that to, to even hold on to something that long, you can tell that means something to that person. And that, that, that professional wrestling had made a connection to them. And when you hear the questions uh, from the people and see the people in the hallways and the lobby of the hotel back and forth, and you can see that these people have been lifelong lovers of professional wrestling. Like Missy Hyatt said in her acceptance speech last night when she got the, uh, the award, uh, you know, we're all Marks. You know, we're all part mm -hmm. of the same family because we're just Marks that had such a passion that we decided to get into the business. Uh, so for us, like I said, it's, it's a great big family reunion. You get to meet fans that are, have been passionate for decades. Uh, I mean, let's face it, all the guys that are here, pretty much most of the guys that are here, uh, have been retired or semi-retired, uh, haven't wrestled on national television in decades, and yet you still see a building full of fans here excited to see an Arn Anderson, a Tully Blanchard, a Kevin Sullivan, a, a long list of all the 100 guys that are here. So uh, for everybody that's been here and, and here, going to be here tonight and tomorrow, uh, thanks for coming. It's been great so far. And if you haven't come, make sure you make out to a convention because they're a great experience. Is it bad that even last night in the bar I was a little nervous around Kevin Sullivan not knowing what he was going to pull out of that jacket? <laughs> well, Moose said uh, as we were walking down the hall last night and ran into my stalker in the hall about the 18th <laughs> time. Uh, I, I, he must be like hiding behind the curtains or something out there. Uh, but he said, uh, Kevin's, I said, what, what, what's Kevin doing? And he said, he's probably downstairs cutting a cross in his forehead. <laughs> so yeah. I said, well, then I found out you guys were with him. I thought, oh, geez, it's going to be hell. It, yeah, it was crazy because, like, literally at the bar, we, we went out to eat. My wife and I went out to eat, which is lovely, during yeah. your nine-hour banquet, which is lovely. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and we came back, and we, you know, we ch we freshened up. We went down to the bar, and, you know, it was like Kemp Patera sitting at one table, and then another table was Andrea Anderson, Greg Valentine, Kevin Sullivan. Turtle. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was so cool to see, like, just these different guys. Everywhere you turn, there's just somebody else coming up. And then Jerry Stubbs, Dirty White Boy. And then all of a sudden, you then JR just walked sure. through. Jim Ross literally casually walked through. And I said to my wife, I go, there goes Jim Ross. And she goes, where? I was like, he just walked away. He just, he just went in there. And Tully Blanchard <laughs> peeked his head into the bar. And it's, uh, it's one of these. This is a four-day event. Yeah. You know, and you think about four day events for anything, you got to put in a hell of an effort. And this guy, T Mart, Marty, he did a, yeah. a pretty damn good job. And uh, I think a lot of it has to do with us Northeasterners. Maybe that could be it. You know, us <laughs> Northeasterners know how to do a, uh, do, do a convention well. But, uh, you know, I don't know, Shane. I mean, what else can you say about uh, this? What's, let, me, let me ask you this question. So you got your, your signing is tomorrow, mm -hmm. right? Yes. You did your thing with Ricky. Yes. Um, is there something that you've seen a fan carrying around, like a, an item or a piece or a belt or something that you just do a double take at and just go like, wow, man, that is pretty cool that this yeah. guy has. Is there anything, anything that really catches your eye? Well, yesterday when Ricky and I were doing the, uh, the, the joint photos, you know, every so often a person would come in just with Ricky or just with me, but most of them were one of us together. And a guy came in and he had the NWA WCW tag team belts. And say, hey, you guys want to use these for your for your photo shoot? You know, so how many people are walking around with the NWA title? You know, both of them, yeah. not, not just one replica. Uh, yeah, all this stuff. Like, you know, when somebody comes in, the thing I'm, I mark out for is when I see the old programs. You know, yeah. something from 30, 35, 40 years ago. Right. And, you know, just reading and looking at the lineup and thinking, this would have been a show that I would have been at as a kid. You know, <laughs> because right. that, that was the kind of stuff that I really loved going to. Uh, so yeah, it's it's always it always impresses you. But you know, like for me, uh, there's a there's a guy that's here. He's been wanting me to do this for about two years. Uh, I had done it one time for one fan in Legends of the Ring, where he brought a great big poster of the uh, belt throwdown. 
and he wanted me to write out the entire uh, speech. Well, that's a, as you know, I'm a pretty verbose person, and uh, <laughs> uh, that was a pretty long promo, and to write literally the entire thing yeah. took some time, especially because you want to space it right, not run out of space at the bottom of this guy's poster. Right, or, right. Uh, so there's a guy here that said that he's he wants to get the same thing, and, and I finally relented and said, okay, you know, let, let Moose know the big ugly guy with the tattoos on his arm. <laughs> and... Uh, you know, so I, I've been getting a lot more uh, requests for that since that first part, the word leaked out for the first person I did it for, and now more and more people are wanting that. Uh, but, you know, it's in my head, it just blows my mind that, that what, 24, five, 25 years now later, that people s still even remember that, let alone wanting, you know, some kind of a piece of memorabilia from that. Right. And Ricky Steamboat was talking about that last night whenever another person, how did I forget this, Macho Man was uh, given a, 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 a posthumous award to, uh, to his brother, of course, Lanny. And Ricky introduced Lanny and got up and, and told the story that he had told me years ago when we were on the road about how he and Macho had set up the, yeah, uh, the yeah. WrestleMania. That's a great match. story. Yeah, the match is. If you, like, I'm sure there's nobody out there watching this that hasn't seen it yet. But if you haven't, or you haven't seen it for a while, pick pull it up on YouTube right now because it is just a fucking amazing match. And when you watch how hard both of those guys are working and how many spots they got in, he said it last night, and I never realized it. The match is only 17 minutes long. Right. And they had something like 35 segments and I think 22 false finishes. Yeah. You know, to squeeze all those that sequences, in. Those um, yeah, sequences, unbelievable. Amazing. Just, you know, you, as, a, as a worker to performer, and you watch two guys like that creating absolute magic. Right. And what I didn't know until last night was R Ricky talked about how uh, typically, going into a big match like a WrestleMania or a SummerSlam, they would let you work on the like B or C towns right. to work some kinks out. And that one, they then stopped doing that, so they weren't able to work together. But they would often every night write down spots and kick them around and mold them. Right. But never really had a chance. So the fact that that night at WrestleMania three was the first time they were in the ring actually performing the spots that they had set up and, and, and crafted out, and then you look how just perfection that match is. unbelievable it is I totally was so so much mad respect for those guys and what they can do yeah and they were on the floor literally in in arenas practicing yeah. you know yes. we gotta do this we gotta do yes. that i don't want to say practicing that they were going over different things that they were going to do in the match yeah. and yet it became a, a, a masterpiece that i mean everybody across the board i mean sure. i've even heard jesse the body ventura say it was the greatest match he's ever seen yeah and i mean it, it's like unbelievable jesse don't push stuff over like that no it's not like jesse's no. mo so. and especially if it's somebody else you know he's yes. putting over somebody yeah. else yeah. to that extent <laughs> it's a big deal but you know yeah ricky steamboat i mean he really he's a guy and again i saw him getting off the elevator and i just walked by and I said, wow that's ricky the Dragon Steamboat, and all the times I work at Ricky Steamboat, interview Ricky Steamboat, I still get that. Oh yeah, you know, like yeah. wow. I showed my wife. I said, "That's Sergeant Slaughter." Yeah, <laughs> just walked in sure. the room because yes, he's Sergeant Slaughter. He's a little, you know, he's a little older, but he's still Sergeant Slaughter. You and see him. He, looks like he, Sergeant he still leads with his chin <laughs> when he walks into the room. But here, this was great. You were up. Yeah, obviously, you weren't on the convention floor with us, but Bob Backlund. Yeah, known to be. A little, a little, you know, eccentric. Yeah. Is that being Good kind? Word. Is no, eccentric? Sense, okay. No, known to be a little eccentric at conventions. All of a sudden, he just starts yelling, and you turn around, and I even saw Tully Blanchard turn around. He has Sergeant Slaughter in a cross-faced chicken wing <laughs> across the other side of the convention floor, and it's just like, man, only in a wrestling convention can you see yeah. Bob, Bob Backlund putting Sergeant Slaughter <laughs> in a cross-faced chicken wing in 2019, yeah. right? Or, I mean, how great, how great is that? that? Yeah, you're not going to catch it at a Walmart or a, a get-go anyplace. You're going to have to go come to a convention to see something like that. Now, with the dinner, now I know there was a long dinner because we, we knew a couple people who were in the dinner, and they yeah. were they were even saying, like, this is a, this is a, this yeah. a friggin' long dinner, yeah. right? It, it was. Everybody, I mean, all the speeches were great. Yeah. All the presentations were great. Uh, you know, all the guests I had at my table were great. I mean, it, it, there was no bad experience. Right, it right. It just got long. You know, 6.30, you're thinking maybe it'd be out yeah. by 9.30. Yeah. And around 11 o'clock when we finally let out, yeah, you could see people holding it, holding it, have to go to the bathroom until they literally was up to here, and then they zip out and come running back in. Uh, but no, it was, it was a good, good experience. Like I said, I think the best one I'd ever And And what I want to say was is that you guys sat with a group of fans. So yes. from what I was told, there was basically fans were given a list. Uh, like, I don't know if it was priority or if it was like special drawing or you pick your name out of a hat. Yeah, no, but fans paid X amount of dollars. I don't know how much it was to have 
this banquet go on and have a wrestler sit at the table. Mm. So did you have, were they like asking you guys questions intermittently? Like how did that work and how did you like kind of spending that intimate time with the fans? Well, when we first got in there at 6.30, excuse me, we were told what room or what table we were at. Anyway, I went and sat down and the, the guests joined me. And we spoke for probably, I don't know, 45 minutes to an hour just answering questions and just, you know, batting stuff back and forth, like, you know, sort of like we do, we're doing right now. And uh, they all had great questions. And, you know, for me, it's amazing that there wasn't one. And, and lately I've been seeing this, like, like walking around the hotel with my stalker again in the hall. He's probably outside <laughs> the door right now. Uh, and, you know, at the dinner, it, it hasn't been the same questions over and over again. It's been questions from a different perspective or asking about, you know, like one guy asked about, you know, what was it like to train with Dominic Tanucci and, and Mick Foley and all the guys. Right. And, uh, you know, and, and they were all very well versed. Uh, they, they were familiar with Brian Hildebrand, Mark Curtis, and they were familiar with Cody Michaels and, uh, you know, being in Freedom, Pennsylvania. So, like, that's like that anybody would even put that in the, in the, in the brain memory cell someplace that it was Freedom, Pennsylvania. Uh, it just astounds me. But that's, you know, the, that, again, the, the, it's the passion of the wrestling fans. Right. I had a really good group of guys that I was sitting with, and, and I talked to Steamboat afterwards, and he said the same thing about his table. It looked like everybody in that room was having a great time. That's cool. Now, we usually talk about it and kind of laugh, like, Shawn Michaels, yes, you, could, you know, he's not your favorite person in the world. Vince McMahon, yes, not your favorite person in the whole world. Was this a different crop of questions than yeah. you would normally get because yeah. this is a more of that old school, like we're talking, this is Crockett territory, legit horseman yes. country. Like, were you getting different questions than yeah. you normally get? Very few WWF questions. The only question I think I got at the table last night about WWF was, uh, um, you know, when, when you work there, uh, you know, like, when did you realize it really, it was a question that segued out of the question about the revolution. Right. And, oh, okay. You know, so the, everything else was pretty much centered around NWA or the wrestlers that were big here in the NWA.